is going on guys it's yoji in this video i want to discuss five things that you might have missed in the announcements that were kind of like snuck in there hidden there that I've, i found notable some things you might have not missed and uh, some things i think you could have definitely missed because they are like very tiny details but there are things that i think could be impactful or things that i think people could be undervaluing or like overlooking a bit how impactful they could be and other things are just like minute details that i think that people uh like you for example could maybe just have missed out on that could be significant for what you're planning to do or what you like thought about doing or maybe it's just kind of interesting right so let's get to it but if you're new to this channel or if you're old to this channel and you're not subscribed subscribe like click the button hit the hit the bell thing maybe even just so you you know we are like almost 40k subscribers it would be kind of like a nice number to to get to so yeah do that and let's get started the first thing I noticed with the new gem reveals was that there was an orb tag on the new orb, water orb skill that they revealed. And such a gem tag, a new gem tag, does have quite a bit of implications to it um, and enable GGG to do quite a few things. And I don't think they would add such a tag if they don't intend to, maybe in the future or this patch, uh, add and like use this tag for several things. So what can an orb tag or like a new gem tag actually do? So first of all, it enables GGG to use passives that uh, specifically refer to orb skills. For example, increased AOE of orb skills or increased cast speed of orb skills or your orb skills cost less money, like, you know, that type of stuff. And the other thing uh, would be that uh, ascendancies, of course, can also do that. So there could actually be a full orb ascendancy branch in the future or in this patch because we have large ascendancy rebalances. So such an orb tag is definitely something they can use for a lot of things. Something else would be that they could um, have a support gem that is specifically for orb skills as well. And if you think about like maybe Void Sphere could be an orb, Orb of Storms could be an orb. I mean, it's it looks it's called orb it looks like an orb and uh, of course the new a new orb as well so there could be some implications there but at the same time there could also be um nerfs of course attached to it that would allow them uh to for example take out and make exceptions uh, for orb skills with specific mechanics for example they, they could just be uh, stating on Archmage that Archmage can't be used with orbs anymore and then orb of storms which is currently just like a normal self-cast spell that happens to have generate an orb that lies around and strikes lightning suddenly it says oh well yeah this doesn't work with archmage anymore that could happen not saying this is going to happen just saying they could do and pull some shenanigans and also why would they introduce an orb archetype or like an, an orb um skill tag and if they won't like use it in the future so maybe there are more orbs coming may maybe they will have uh, several different types of orb skills lots of orb skills an orb archetype as i just like kind of spoiled uh an orb ascendancy you know stuff like that could be could be happening so path of orbs is upon us this second one is a little bit of a tiny numerical thing that maybe a few people have missed uh tailwind is nerfed yep on the dead eye ascendancy you can see that the tailwind is now eight percent instead of the ten percent uh for everything except for dead eye because uh dead eye well that dead eye's base is also still eight percent but uh you get the gale force buff which is basically the same type of like similar type of buff that dead eye is getting currently and if you add up the numbers and do the math um at max stacks dead eye is just as fast as it is right now but everyone else for example a an assassin using tailwind boots does get less they get 8% now instead of 10. So Tailwind Boots basically nerfed, which um, I don't think is too bad of a thing. They're already, like, even with 8%, they're still, like, one of the best things to get faster because it is a multiplier to everything your character does. It's action speed. Action speed is insane. So, yeah, I think just thought that many of you might have missed this because it's just, like, a tiny 2%, like, snuck in there in the reminder text. For the third one, um, I mean, I couldn't make a huge list um, of all the changes on the Atlas, or like the changes, the effects on the Atlas uh, passive trees, because there's a lot of stuff to be missed there, from uh, Nico uh, sulfide be gained from bosses to like whatever. But this one I found particularly notable because not many people have talked about it really. Like the Tormented Spirit one, a lot of people noticed. They wait, the Torment one isn't bad. Cool. Um, this one I think is very notable. It's uh, that there are passives uh, that were shown on the Atlas passive trees of one region that make it so that uh, breach stones can drop from uh, breach bosses that spawn, and also like having a higher chance to uh, chance to spawn, like a higher spawn rate, like a significantly higher spawn. I think it's one hundred percent more um, of breach bosses as well, and also a chance for those breach stones to be upgraded on top of that. Uh, I'll be at a small one, but I think a lot of people like wrote off breach as kind of like a thing. It's like I don't. Why would I specialize into? 
breach. But that one seemed actually particularly good, because especially if you're playing SSF, but also in trade, breach stones are always worth a lot, and breach stones um, are pretty good for uh, experience. A lot of people use them to grind to 100 really, really fast. So if that's something you want to do in SSF, for example, or if you just want to sell breach stones or run them yourself in a, in a rotation in trade, it's a good ch a good source of breach stones. So yeah, I think a lot of people kind of like overlook that and wrote breach off a little bit more like ah breach whatever. It's just not it's nerfed. It's not not as good anymore. But it is. Beware what you ask, no man. Next one is a tiny lore one. It's number four. Um, normally a character is called Exile, but the envoy and the beginning of the the trailer thing calls us Nomad. I found that very notable after being called Exile for like 7, 8, 9, 10, well, how many years in every single dialogue? It's, uh, I thought this, this was a really big break with what we what we used to. So either to the, to the Envoy, we are a different entity, like he views us differently than everyone else. Or there's some hint here, some Path of Exile 2 stuff, maybe there's some, some stuff happening here. I just wanted to kind of like throw this out there because I think a lot of people just glanced over it like Envoy, Envoy okay hey, he's some, some some NPC and he's just like oh no mad and this, I thought this was very notable so yeah what does it mean what does it mean we don't know um maybe we'll find out this expansion maybe later maybe we'll have to ask Kitten Cat Noodle and find out that way but yeah I think this is a really cool thing and it's very as I said very very um interesting and notable to me personally and number five is uh we'll have a regional atlas I don't think Everyone has really grasped what that means. Atlas regions currently is mainly which maps are in there. That's that's really all that is to is. But uh, all that that is to that. And this time around, the Atlas passive trees are region based. So each Atlas region will have its own different passive tree, which I think is very very notable and very uh, makes very region even more distinct. Not just the maps that are in there. And also, I noticed the craftable watchstones. They have uh, symbols on them that. Uh, and also in their name, there's the name of each region, which is the region they are from, I'm assuming. And I wonder if they can only be used in that specific region. If that is the case, that could mean that the prices of these watchstones vary greatly between uh, from region to region. Because some regions might be, have insane passive trees, really good maps. And other regions might be like not that popular passive trees and um, have maps that people just don't like to run as much. Like quote-unquote worse maps. And those ones might be worth way less. And that, that's something I could see happen personally. And that is a huge change from how we are handling the Atlas currently. Currently it's just like, good map, bad map, run good map, stash, bad map, sell bad map. I don't know, stuff like this. And now it's like really tricky to... Um, I don't think it's really tricky, but it's way more tricky. A lot more thinking required. Like, which reason, region does each map belong to? And all the whole regional um, identity of the Atlas has been strengthened by like 10 times at least. So that's something to keep in mind, and I think that's something that a lot of people are sleeping on, how much that will actually matter. And lastly, before we head out, uh, one small bonus one for all of us, SSF. SSF, by the way, people, um, looking forward to play some SSF uh, in the uh, upcoming expansion. There's an Alteration Divination card that was just not really mentioned, that's just kind of like snuck in there on the, on the reveal site. And alterations on SSF can make a crap ton of a difference. It's uh, two cards for 20 alterations, so it's not going to be super common. Um, but if that's at all farmable, that will be a huge boon, and if you uh, take on top of that harvest crafting coming back in a apparently very usable way, and uh, also the option to choose rewards from um, Ritual League, I think SSF, this league, is going to be really good, and I'll most likely be playing it, even though I originally thought I wanted to play some meme build and trade, I'll probably play something halfway off matter in... Uh, in SSF this time around, which is gonna be lit, gonna be good. So yeah, thank you all for watching, subscribe if you're new to this channel, thank you to all my supporters as always, you guys are amazing, and especially like recently, a few more people have joined, and it's it's really, really nice. Uh, check out my stream, twitch.tv slash it's the OG. Um, I'm, I will be streaming a lot more this like upcoming year, and I've got new, new emotes, we got like lots of cool stuff, and I'll be streaming the uh, upcoming expansion. It's gonna be really nice, and I hope to see you, see you there. I have to stop talking. I'm Yoji, and I will see you soon.